going on, warriors? I'm out in the woods practicing some of my survival skills, my bushcraft skills, and I'm actually working on a uh, raised bed. So um, I like camping in a hammock. I like, you know, getting off the ground. And, um, you know, it's just easier, especially as the cold weather's coming in, to lay on the ground. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's really bad for you, actually. The, if, it, if the ground is too cold, it's going to suck the heat right out of your body. And uh, I did that once before, and it was, uh, it was scary, to put it, put it lightly. Um, so P.S., I, I like hammock camping. I like uh, a, a quick thing is making a browse bed. You just stuff like big garbage bags with leaves and debris and stuff and get yourself four inches of, uh, co you know, four inches compressed of debris and to create some barrier between you and the ground so that the ground won't suck the heat out of you. But a pretty cool thing that you make is uh, using two tripods. We're going to make a raised bed. You could do it with bipods also. I like tripods because I feel like it's a little bit more sturdy and uh, I could use it for uh, multifunctional purposes. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Stick with me. What's up, warriors? This is Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training, here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you find your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and the little thing that says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops and you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. The part of this whole thing that takes, if you ask me, really the most amount of time is just finding the materials. So if there's like trees that have leaves on them, I don't like to cut that stuff down. I look for stuff that's kind of freshly fallen. So it's clearly, it's not, it's, it's, I guess it's dead, but it ain't really dead. So uh, if, if it snaps real easy, that's not gonna serve my purpose. Um, if it's kind of freshly fallen, still a little bit green, like when you knock on it, it sounds solid. That's, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And the straighter, the better. I cut most of it down, believe it or not, with a, uh, a handsaw, silky gomboy, that's what I like. Um, I've had a Fiskars one, which I liked a lot. I, had a, I have a Baco Laplander, which I like a lot, but this thing is just a machine. Um, this is the, I always forget how to say it, the, the, uh, what the hell's the company called? Agawa, the Borealis. Uh, this is the 21. It's pretty cool how it, it folds up. Um, stuff that was a little bit bigger or a little bit more challenging, I use this. Um, I like that it folds real small, fits my pack, no problem, on the outside of my pack. And, uh, that's the handsaw. And then I use my uh, council tool, camp carver. And this is not for, uh, you know, like chopping anything down. It's more like kind of cleaning up the branches along the way. A little bit easier to like whack off the, the little things that are sticking out to the side that are gonna get caught on my, uh, you know, as we assemble the, the bed. I don't want stuff uh, getting in the way of where I'm gonna put my lashings for the tripods, or I'm gonna put the, the logs that are gonna kind of sit on the tripod, which you'll see in a second. But this is really more so for cleaning up the edges, and uh, even the back, I used to kind of hammer off the, the little like spikes that stick out of the side. Ultimately, any hand saw would do. Uh, a buck saw helps, and, and axes always come in handy. If I didn't have this, I could have done it using something else, but these are the things I use. It's just, it makes it a lot easier. My grandfather says, if you got the right tools, it makes the job easier. 97 years old, he's got to know something, right? All right, so what I did was I cut um, branches as straight as I could find them, about five feet in length. I, I could have gone longer. I guess I could have gone a little bit shorter. Uh, for what I'm trying to do, I think five feet will be all right. I cut six of them because I need to make two tripods. And I have a roll of uh, number 36 bank line. It's tarred. It's got some... Uh, it's a little rough, which makes it, I think it's very good for working on uh, wood stuff. It's disposable cordage. You could use paracord, but it stretches, and when I'm done with this, I, I toss it. Uh, I have plenty of rolls of it, and I use it all the time. Uh, whereas this is disposable, your paracord is stuff that you're going to retrieve or, or use, and I take it back when you're done. All right, so now what I do is I'm going to take three, three of my logs, and more important than the top and where the top is situated, is where the bottom is situated. So the way I'm gonna do this is, I want the bottoms, of course, to be uh, relatively even so that they'll sit evenly when I open up the tripod. I want the top, I only need a little bit of fork at the top because I'm gonna put a ridge pole uh, in there. What I need is for the base to spread out wide enough that between two poles, which I'm gonna rest the, like the sides of the bed on, have to be at least as wide as me. So I get the bottoms, even and then I'm going to tie it on maybe like eight inches or so from the top I kind of get them to sit relatively close together again I double check that the bottom the bottom is uh, squared off and we go to our tripod lash 
And remember, I'm gonna do this the simple one. That, that's the one I like. Uh, not the quick one where you flip the middle over, but I'll show you. So we start off with a clove hitch. I'm gonna go around once. I go around twice. The second uh, wrap goes over itself to create an X. I feed the running end through or under the X. Okay. I put a stop knot in there so that it won't pull through. And there's your clove hitch. I'm going to start with a clove hitch and end with a clove hitch. Okay. So, real simple. The simplest way is to just wrap the whole thing three times. Or because it's going to be me laying on it, I want it to be a little bit more structural. So I'm going to go like five or six times. And with th thinner cord, like bank line, you could do that. A good trick is to lift the stuff off the ground to make it easier to work with. There we go. So I'm going to go around once. When I'm doing this, I try to keep them... I don't want to make it so tight that they like buckle. I want it to stay side by side. So I'm going to make it as tight as I can, keeping them side by side. And I try to dress it up, meaning that I keep the the uh, cord like alongside itself. Like I don't want like spaces between it. I want it to be as neat as possible. I kind of eyeball it, to be honest with you, uh, more so than having like a magic number that I'm going for. I usually go around five or six. Um, but again, you'll see how, what, what really kind of makes it uh, come all together. Now, we're going to go for our fraps. So we wrap it and then we frap it. So the wraps go around the logs and the fraps go around the wraps. And the way that's going to work is this. I go through here and from here I could kind of cut off some line. All right, so from here I'm going to go under and through. Now, your fraps, you want to be tight. And the way we're going to make it really tight is like so. Find a stick, use as a toggle, and wrap it around a few times, and I'm going to pull on it like a handle. All right, that's one. One frap. Come on. I'm going to go under and through. Come on. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to wrap the next one. I like to keep it nice and neat. My instructors are uh, Sean Kelly over at Corporal's Corner is a perfectionist. And he'll be like, ah, it's yours, do what you want. But the way he says, whatever, do what you want, it's kind of like, it's not how I would do it. And it's like, uh, I could tell in his head, that's unacceptable. He is best who is trained in the severest of schools. Give me the hard teacher. They'll make you better. There we are. That's what it's supposed to look like. Nice and tight. And then we're going to finish with a clove hitch on this side. I'm going to clean this up in a second so it doesn't look sloppy. I'll try my best to not have it look sloppy. One two so I have my X feed it through make it tight stop not And the stop knot is so that in case your, your clove hitch starts to slip, it only goes far as your stop knot and no further. Burn it. And fuse it. Nice. All right, that's one. Okay. Okay, so now I just repeat the steps on the other side. Again, I have an extra log to uh, 
hold up the logs I'm going to be lashing. I figure out which one I want to be the top, which one I want to be the bottom. I should try to put the, the fatter part on the bottom, the skinnier part on top. If the lengths are off a little bit, that's okay. Again, you just want to make sure that the bottoms are flush and that you tie the tops together um, about eight, or in, eight inches or so from the top. Dress it up. Make sure that there's enough room. Like if the bottoms are flush and you want the tops, uh, if they're different lengths, you got to make sure that you're not starting too high and like you, you're going to run off the top of your shortest log. So I always go like eight inches down or so from the shortest one. I usually try to cut them as tight as I can, but if it's not perfect, it's okay. And usually if you're going to, if you're going for like, like perfect, it's not going to be fast. If you're going for fast, it's not, it's not going to be perfect. Now we go for our clove hitch. I didn't make it long enough. No worries. So we have a double fisherman's knot. I'm gonna make sure I put the double fisherman's knot in the, uh, it's not in the way. Make a knot that's not in the way. <laughs> so that's one side. If you don't know how to make a double fisherman's knot, they come in very, very handy, as you can tell. Now, let's hope when I put my butt on this thing, it don't fall apart. Imagine this is the weakest link. Oh, they'll have a real, real laugh at my expense. Okay, look at that. All right, so we had a clove hitch with a stop knot to get us started, right? Wrapped it, frapped it. I ran out of line, even though I was doing my best not to. I guess I cut the line too short. I used a double fisherman's knot to extend the line. So that's clove hitch, stop knot, double fisherman's knot, clove hitch stop knot. Three knots. And uh, you know, in the beginning when you first start learning how to when you first start learning how to like tie certain knots, they seem a little bit challenging. But man, they come in so useful, they're so handy. They're like Again, think of how long it took you to learn how to tie your shoes, right? And how hard that seemed when you first started learning. And now you do it without thinking twice about it. So it's a good idea to learn a handful of knots. Walk around with some string in your pocket. Next time you're getting lost on your phone while you're online at the doctor or Costco or wherever, supermarket, instead of like just rotting your brain on the phone, pull out a string and practice tying some knots. And then before you know it, things like this are pretty simple. All right? All right, so now that I got two tripods set up, Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, you know, you adjust them as, as long as you need to or as short as you need to. What I need is for about this high off the ground to be about a little further than my, my arm's length. So when I take my, in essence, this is gonna be the thing that holds me up like a stretcher. And the way I'm gonna hold it together is I'm gonna take two um, 55 gallon, six mil thick drum liners and cut the ends so they become like a sleeve. Feed one through, feed the other one through, lay it down on the top and friction will hold it in place. No knots necessary. And then we cross our fingers that the garbage bags will hold me up. So in my pack, I always carry at least three of these drum liners. Now you could use like the contractor grade garbage bags that you would get at like your local home improvement or hardware store. Um, and depending on how big or heavy you are, It'll work, maybe. Uh, and if not, you would just add a couple more, maybe double them up. Um, but these, they're like, I think, twice as thick, twice as strong. And instead of going with regular contracted garbage bags, they're 55 gallon drum liners. So look at the size of that thing. So what I do is I use two for either to make a browse bed. So instead of building something like this, like it was getting dark fast and you need to get up a, a tarp shelter quick and you needed to get yourself off the ground quick, you just feel like leaves, like there's plenty of leaves all around me or, or big boughs you know, off the trees, some of the pine trees that are around, the, the firs and whatnot. And you just stuff it so that when you lay on top of it, even compressed, there's still about four inches between you and the ground. So if the ground is frozen, you won't freeze. But for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the bottoms off. Why do I carry a Swiss Army knife and a multi-tool? Well, for one, my Swiss Army knife doesn't have scissors in it. I like the scissors. The other reason is that my Swiss Army knife doesn't have pliers either. And these things, are, they're, not, they're not super expensive, but they're not cheap either. So like, after this, I'm gonna keep this. I'm not gonna throw this out. There's a million other uses for it. You could uh, open up the whole thing and turn it into a tarp. 
right? Um, especially this thick. This and some Gorilla Tape. Oh my God. It's better than some of the store-bought tarps that are out there. Especially those cheapy ones. But even the cheapy ones, they come in handy in a pinch. Again, we were talking about it in one of the other videos that it really comes down to your level of skill. You know, having good equipment is, is great and it makes things a lot easier. But even if you have equipment that is subpar or not the best stuff out there, but your skills are good, then you get by with it. And you probably get by with it better than somebody who, uh, you know, doesn't have the skills, but maybe has the best stuff out there, you know? If I had to choose between skills and good gear, give me the good skills, because good skills can make subpar gear work. We open this up. Slide through one stick. That's one. That's two. This is definitely easier with two people, just so you know. And now we mess with it. I see how far apart they gotta be. I open it up. Okay. So I, uh, I moved around the legs a little bit. It was sliding down a bit. Oh. That's nice. Ooh, gonna just make it. Gonna just make it. All right. Using some bank line, we'll tie this to the top of the, the tripods, and then I could put my tarp over that, and, and we're good to go. All right, so I have my, my tarp. Watch what you can see in my video on how to set these up. This is the Arcturus. I forget how to say the name. Uh, I always tape the corners just so that uh, it's like reinforced. I got my ties out, my tie outs already on there. I'm gonna put it shiny side down so that uh, helps keep, you know, reflect my body temperature at me. If I stake out the front, I could uh, get a fire going and have it reflect some of the, the heat back on me as well. I want the middle of the tarp to be in the middle of the, the pole. Pull the corners out so that when the rain comes and it rolls off, it's not gonna roll into the bed and have me sleeping in a big puddle. It's gonna roll away and off to the side. I put the Marlin spike hitch kinda of out toward the end of the line. I don't make it super tight on the stake. You can always adjust the 10 stakes after, but a Marlin spike hitch, I make a loop. I put the loop on top of the line and I pull the line through. Makes a pocket and it pulls nice and snug. And it won't slide. Do it close to the end. Tent stake goes through. Again, I don't need to pull it super tight. I just want it off of the off the bed. I'm going to adjust my bags also, so that no, no, the, it's not sticking out. I want the right. I want it under there, so no rain gets on it. Makes a big puddle for me to sleep in. All right. All right. With a bigger tarp, you can make more room underneath there, but there's plenty of room. I'll show you. So if you could tell, the sides go past the ends of the, edge of the bed. Plenty of room in there for me. It's probably gonna sink a little bit when I hop in, and hopefully it won't crash through. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching or preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you gotta have it, make sure you hit the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find me on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. 
Thanks for watching.